Well, we're back with another Sunken City card review. Only a few this time, uh, light schedule over the weekend, but we got this one, Abyssal Depths for Demon Hunter, a new four mana spell. It's a shadow spell, and it draws your two lowest cost minions. So at first glance, like, wait a minute, four mana draw two. Okay, that's not great. Lowest cost minions? What? <laughs> I want, like, the lowest impact stuff in my deck. Uh, yeah, gross. And, and, you know, if you were just randomly completing a deck, this wouldn't be exciting. But, of course, when you can target the specific kinds of minions you're drawing, and this becomes a really interesting tutor card, I think there's some, some promise there. For instance, if you think about a card like Vandar, you could build a big Vandar Demon Hunter and guarantee that you're going to draw Vandar somewhat reliably off of Abyssal Depths. Uh, and that could help increase, you know, instead of having one Vandar in your deck, it's kind of like you got some extra ones. Now, it, it does have some overhead here at four mana, right? That's not great. You don't really want to spend eight mana to set up your Vandar play because you got to play the Vandar too. So, you know, it's not like that's free and easy, but there are still reasons to do this. And if you think about, say, like an old Ilganoth deck, right, you might want to just make sure you find Ilganoth and maybe you only run a couple minions in your deck. So Abyssal Depths makes a lot of sense. Even like Jace nowadays, if you're able to run a bunch of fell spells and a Jace, you're probably okay at some point weaving in for mana to make sure that you find your win conditions specifically. Now, here's the thing, right? This is competing against a lot of just very efficient card draw in Demon Hunter already. They are the masters of cheap card cycle. And if you have enough cycle, you don't necessarily need specific card draw because you're just drawing a bunch of stuff and you're going to land on the things that you need anyway at some given point. So I do not think this will be a good fit for a majority of decks. Like there will be a lot of decks where this card is actually just very awkward and unfortunate and you'd much rather have just fast, cheap draw drawing the same number of cards. Does that mean, though, that there won't be a deck that comes along where this becomes a really interesting option because they have that specificity or they need to be doing uh, other things and not able to run as much card draw? Perhaps. Uh, I think it's an absolute possibility. So uh, I would keep an eye on this card. I think it's one of those that could lie dormant for a year and a half and then suddenly some deck pops up where it makes a ton of sense. And you're like, oh, my God, yes. That's exactly the sort of thing I need to find my win condition. So cards like this have that latent power hiding in them. It just often takes a while for the stars to align, basically, for them to work. All right, next up here we have School Teacher. This is a 4-mana 5 for Naga. Battlecry at a 1-1, one, one, Naga Ling to your hand. Discover a spell that costs 3 or less to teach it. So this is kind of like a mini Swamp Queen Hagatha back in the day, but packed with lots of flavor, teaching a little spell to a Noggling. That's so cute. I love it in that regard. And uh, I think this is, you know, ideally a Naga fuel card. It's basically two Nagas in one, so that if you need to have Naga cycling through your hand to activate spells and Naga synergy spell stuff, then this gives you a two for one punch. Even outside of that, this is a way to just get a discounted spell. Essentially, this 1-1 one, one, uh, is only going to cost one mana, so the spell is really going to cost you one mana with a little bit of a body attached. And uh, if you have a class that has a lot of really good low-cost spells, that might be a way to get extra versions of them, maybe like a Wildfire in Mage. I personally doubt the consistency of that a little bit, uh, there's often a lot of three or less spells in, in given classes. We have seen wand makers succeed in that regard, though. So it's kind of like a, a wand maker, but that was an even more limited pool at one mana. As you as you expand it to three, it's it harder and harder to find stuff you want. So a little bit iffy on consistency, but regardless, uh, quite a bit going on here for a neutral card. Now, I've seen some really hyped feedback about this. Like people think this is going to be nuts. I'm not quite as sold, I guess. As, as some of the uh, early responses I saw for this one on uh, Reddit and so on, I think there's a little bit too much overhead on this. I, I know that a 5-4 for 4 mana in the old days would have been like, yes, wow, vanilla stat line with all this upside. Not quite as convinced that's rare or going to be worth it here. I mean, when I look at a lot of the 4-drops currently getting played in Hearthstone, they have really big effects, and they're doing things right away or very impactful sorts of things that are often like their battle cries are stronger than the average three mana or less spell. And this is adding basically a mana because you got to spend that mana on the noggling. So this is kind of even competing against five drops in a weird way. 
So I don't think the like output of this card is enough to actually outshine other competitive four drops, even like multicaster, for instance, right? How many three men or less spells are going to do something like draw you three cards? That's hard to keep up with. And yes, this has a little more attack, but I think I'd rather have three cards for a lot of decks. Think about like deep water evoker, drawing you a card and gaining a lot of armor. Think about like Zyrella, this like big, crazy board clear. That's probably going to be better than whatever the three mana spell you get is. So you know, it's just a competitive world out there these days at four mana, and this is fine, but it's just a, it's it's kind of a pass on turn four. You're kind of just plopping down this dude that's not awful. It's just not quite keeping up sometimes with the pace of Arson. So uh, I think if you're going to play this, it's going to be because of those Naga activations, right? It's because of the increased consistency of all the Nagas that you're playing, and this gives you two of them. Or you have some really specific reason for this one, one with like Battle Cry synergies or Cheat Minion synergies or Naga synergies. I don't think this gets there on its own. So I'm not saying it's unplayable. I'm not saying it's awful, just that it will have a very specific use case, probably exactly for Naga decks that need Naga consistency in the mid game. This definitely does offer that without sacrificing too much. I still think it's a solid play, just not, you know, in every deck, not that neutral card that gets played across the board. And now we'll move on to Naga's Pride. This card came out yesterday, kind of a weird surprise dump on the card site there. And uh, it's funny, the, the previous card I, I like less than most people. Most people don't like this card that well. Uh, and I think it's actually pretty OK. <laughs> I like Naga's Pride, which is good. I've been a little down on the Hunter set, but this is a three mana spell. It's going to summon you two, two, two Lionfish. Uh, and if you played a Naga while holding this, you're going to give those plus one, plus one. So uh, three mana for two, three threes. That's a bit reminiscent of a card like Double Agent we saw recently tearing things up in Rogue. So we know on that high roll scenario, this can be a very impactful tempo play. Getting those two bodies for three mana. It doesn't have maybe the bounce upside of things like Rogue, where you can shadow step those and such, but still a, a good board builder for sure. Now, the question is, are you going to be able to activate them as three threes often, or are you not going to have played a Naga while holding the Naga's Pride? I think that's certainly a little bit of a challenge. We've already seen two mana Naga come in for Hunter that's a legendary. That's not going to be super consistent or even desirable necessarily at two mana, but I have to suspect there might be one or two cheaper Nagas that come along to make this work. But here's the thing. I don't think it's actually terrible if you're just getting two two twos. That's kind of like the old card landscaping. Uh, there are still synergies. These are beasts that pop up that can have an upside. Plus, it's just a spell and sometimes having spells in hand and playing them has synergies for Hunter and especially spells that turn into minions can be advantageous for a lot of different kinds of deck builds where you need consistent sorts of minions and deck the right level of beasts or high costs or death rattles or whatever. So cards like this can sometimes fill in those gaps that kind of animal companion spot that's worked a lot. Now, this doesn't look as good to me as animal companion necessarily, but it's not that far off. Perhaps you're still getting quite a bit of stat play on board and some bodies to work with as well. So I think at a base level, this is okay. If you have the Naga activation, looks pretty solid to me. I don't know if Naga Hunter is gonna come along. That's gonna be important for this card to feel really good, but I still think it's kind of okay as is. It's got a few different synergistic angles to exploit and that can be how cards get played. They kind of squeeze their way into decks because of one of those various reasons. So I would say Naga's Pride is actually pretty solid looking. Abyssal Depths is a four star card at some point. It's going to look like a two star card for a long time. School Teacher is a three star card. Naga's Pride is a three star card. And there you go, that wraps it up for this review. Very curious to hear your thoughts on the school teacher. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I want to know. Share those in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this review. I know it wasn't a super big one, but uh, cards are trickling out, so we're going to talk about them. Uh, that said, stay tuned for more uh, early this week. I think we have more reviews on the way. So thanks so much as always for watching, and until next time, game on.